subscribed to all that and we're getting ready to, to notch. They're chiseling out the notches so we don't overcut with a chainsaw. This is uh, either called uh, scribe fit or full scribe fit, sometimes Scandinavian cope or Swedish cope. Um, but the idea is that all of the log surfaces had been hand fitted to each other. So there are no gaps and it's all wood on wood joinery. pin this together with something too? Um, any kind of holy log screws or anything like that? Yeah, or? not holy log screws because we have to allow for <laughs> shrinkage of each individual log and the settling of the entire log wall gets shorter. Uh, these are green logs so they're gonna each log will shrink in diameter and the shrinkage is usually about four percent radially in a log. Okay. Um, we also get about one percent compression of the logs from the weight of the roof and the and the floor and the logs themselves. Mm -hmm. So now we're up to five percent settling, and then we allow one percent extra for a safety factor. So we allow for six percent settling in these things. You have to have an air and a vapor seal on the inside and out, and if you do, if you if the house is tight then it will be much easier to keep warm. As time goes on, this gap closes up, that log comes down and touches that log the full length, and that gasket compresses, and that, the fact that it's compressed is what keeps the uh, air vapor and ex exterior air and water from coming in. There are a lot of log homes in Alaska that were built in the 80s that only had loose fiberglass uh, stuffed in here. And that, that is not an air barrier. Now, fiberglass is used for air filters. Air can pass through fiberglass. And of course, the other problem is, is that if there's any uh, gaps here, then you have the warm, humid air inside the house in the wintertime getting into the dew point and freezing, and frost plugs build up in that, in that uh, fiberglass. So you have to have a way to seal air from getting into or out of this groove cavity. Well, and we all know that. I mean, that's the way that frame houses are built. You have to have a vapor barrier. You have to have a way to keep that insulation dry. The more quickly the logs dry, uh, the more likely they are to, uh, to check and twist. It takes about four or five years for um, the moisture content of the logs to come to equilibrium with the local climate. Um, called EMC, Equilibrium Moisture Content. Four or five years after the roof is on, windows and doors are in, you're living in it four or five years, and then that's it. It'll shrink and settle during that period, but not after. Um, and it, I have seen homes that were heated, especially if they're heated with something like wood. Mm. Um, and th those logs that are close to the wood heat source dry out too quickly. And so, especially in a climate like this, which is super cold, a continental climate in the wintertime, you got to humidify. You got to humidify your house in the wintertime. For one thing, it's more comfortable. And for, for another thing, it's going to s slow down that dr extreme drying stress that you have from sources like wood stove. All logs develop a major check and then lots of small, minor checks. And uh, by cutting a single chainsaw cut in the top of each log, uh, we're able to help the log decide where it's going to crack. And it's the best place is on top of the, of the log. It looks like a tiny check on the surface, but it's already in here, an inch and a half, inch and three quarters. So you measure that distance from the bottom of that check to here, to the center of the log. The kerf would have to be closer to the center than the bottom of that check is to the center. And then you can have an influence on it. But if you haven't gotten to it by then, you're going to have to go deeper and deeper. 
there are some builders who, who kerf almost to the pith, the heart of each log. And so they got a much better chance of, uh, of causing the check to happen on top instead of somewhere else. An up-facing check on the outside surface is going to catch water. Mm. Um, a check that spirals into the, uh, into the long groove area is going to leak air even if there is a gasket and insulation inside. So it's best if each log cracks on top where it's totally sealed. Wind and, and weather can't get to it. Mm -hmm. um, it's inside that gasketed, insulated cavity. Um, uh, and the homeowners like it too because then they don't see so many checks uh, in their house. All pines and spruces start out their lives with a bit of left-hand spiral twist to their grain. Um, so it's, it's the nature of juvenile wood in, in, in uh, gymnosperms to start out left. So if on the surface of the log you now see a straight grain or a right-hand spiral, you know that it has changed over time. And it does. It changes just, you know, a half a degree each year for a hundred years and there you go, you get a spiral grain. But if the log is still left-hand spiral on its surface now, and the surface of the log is 90 or 110 years old, then you know that log is left-hand spiral grain all the way from the core to the outside. And there's no way to balance those drying stresses. They're all lined up in the same way, left-hand. Mm -hmm. So if it's left-hand on the outside, we've tried to put that log low down in the building where there's lots of weight on it and it can't twist so much. The right-hand trees and the straight grain trees, we're free to use them wherever we like. How do you judge right-hand spiral? Well, you know, it's like, for me, it's like, you know, asking a, a batter, how does he judge a curveball? You know, <laughs> I can just look at it and see it. But here's the trick. You put your right hand on the log, and if the, if the check goes the direction of your fingers, it's right hand. If the check goes the other direction, the direction of your thumb, then it's left hand. So this put my right hand on the log. This check is more or less going the direction of my fingers, so it's right hand. 